With the first project, we were looking at classification. In classification, we know the outcome or the discrete buckets that we're putting people into. For the first case, it was um, about the loan. They accepted or they did not accept. So those were discrete categories. And often we have discrete categories. People did this, they didn't do that. They belong in this group or they belong in that group. But sometimes we don't know what the groupings should be. And we need to ask the data what the groups should be. In that case, we're going to use an approach called unsupervised learning. And um, in unsupervised learning, we don't know the outcome. So with supervised learning, like regression and classification that we've done, we knew the outcome and we used that to train a model. In unsupervised learning, we don't know the outcome, we just know the data. And we want the computer to tell us what um, things go together. So in this case, we're going to use a technique called means clustering. Uh, it's called K means clustering. K is a number that can range anywhere from one to many more. Um, normally clusters are um, between one and say seven. Uh, it's a good practice to always have odd number of clusters because otherwise you can end up with situations where things um, should end up in more than one cluster. So always odd clusters. My favorite number of clusters is five. Um, some people prefer three. Uh, you can use some techniques um, to actually identify mathematically how many clusters you should have, the optimal number of clusters. But let's just do an example. Okay, so we're in RapidMinder. We used the auto model process. And we're going to start with the loan data. This is the loan data we looked at before. The first time we used predict. This time we use clusters. So we want to identify groups in our data. Now we get to choose which columns to include. So we don't want to include ID uh, or personal loan. Um, well, ID is a just an indicator variable. It has no bearing on anything. That's just a number to help organize our data. So that shouldn't be included. We're going to go ahead and exclude personal loan and the um, if they have a CD account. We'll leave in the rest. We are going to take out zip code because it can be interpreted as a numeric value, which we don't want. It's actually a categorical variable depicting where someone lives. Everything else looks good. So now we've got 10 different variables, and let's see. So we're offered K means clustering, um, or X means clustering. So we're going to go ahead and do five clusters. Um, X means is going to try a bunch of different options between 2 and 20. So we'll run this, and we're done. So what it has done is created five clusters, starting um, with number 0. In computer science, you often start at 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You can see how many people fall into each cluster. Um, and then, helpfully, you get this kind of explanation of what the defining characteristics of this cluster are. For cluster 0, the education is smaller, the age is smaller, and the family size is smaller. So we might consider people who fall into cluster 1 to be people who are like newly and out of school, young professionals that are younger, don't have families yet. Um, cluster number 1 here, in, um, they have a lower education, uh, lower age, um, and whether or not they have a security account is lower. Okay, So it's kind of breaking out on the securities account. Um, and so each one of these just breaks out. How does it break things out? Well, it's actually using a measure called Euclidean distance. Euclidean distance is exactly what you think um, from uh, geometry. And you've got two points um, in a plane, and you want to draw a line between them, right? So then you would just calculate like a little triangle, the distance between two points. For the k-means, we're using squared Euclidean distance, which takes care of the fact that some points may be negative um, away from a center location. Um, and that's it, right? So we can look at some other things here. This is how the clusters break out. 
a really big tree here. Um, the way that this is working is that it's arbitrarily coming up with five points placed in, in, in a grid, and then it's measuring how far is each point, each value, each observation from that centroid. So we can see where the centroids fall. Um, so if we use jitter, that's going to spread them out, right? These are all at value one, two, or three, right? Because uh, education um, only has those three values. But if we jitter, we can see it a little bit better. They're color coded by cluster. We can switch this to different clusters. Um, so clustering. And here's the actual data set. So we can see the ID of the person and what cluster they're in. We can also do the X means. So it said the optimal number is four clusters. Um, and again, explains what are the characteristics of that cluster. We get the same kind of information here. All right. So with this, if we knew that someone fell into this category, we might know that this group of people should then be treated separately. Maybe we, <clears throat> in marketing, they also often get clever names like um, uh, young professionals or um, startup entrepreneurs, um, stay-at-home parents uh, that are used then to make specific products dedicated to that group. Right, because we statistically know that these groups are different from one another, and so you can target them with different kinds of um, advertisements or marketing materials. Okay, So that is using k-means clustering, an unsupervised clustering technique. Uh, with RapidMiner, you can see how incredibly quickly we were able to do it. It really doesn't take any time at all to go through and uh, calculate. And that was just using two clusters and we're done um, in just a matter of seconds and you can start to get insight into your data this way.